Uh, good morning, and once more, welcome to the second annual DC Blockchain Summit. Uh, my name is Matt Rozek. I proudly serve as chairman of the Chamber of Digital Commerce. I'm also co-founder of Block, an enterprise software company, and I'm here today with my co-founder, Jeff Garzik. And uh, I'm extremely proud to be here. I've seen um, the growth of the chamber uh, firsthand, and uh, if, I, if I look back, uh, over the shoulder uh, for the last 12 months, uh, the chamber has had some amazing milestones. Uh, uh, firstly, the, the membership has grown to uh, by over 100%, uh, so over 100 members. Um, and, and the chamber's had some amazing milestones um, in 2016, uh, some of which uh, uh, I, I could never have imagined. Um, one is uh, uh, Perry and the chamber curated um, the blockchain industry at the Federal Reserve. So with Janet Yellen and 90 central bankers from around the world and created a, uh, a group of folks that uh, included Chain, NASDAQ, Goldman Sachs, Block, uh, and others uh, to describe this technology. Uh, and, and being in that room and seeing central bankers who are not early adopters to new technology, seeing light bulbs go off and questions being asked from Korea and China and Spain uh, was fascinating. And so, uh, blockchain is on, uh, on the mind and on the brain of, of lots of these influencers. Uh, and again, central bankers are not going to adopt new technologies, but the ripples and the, the signaling to markets is, is profound. Uh, uh, the chamber also testified in front of U.S. Congress uh, last year, which was uh, a great honor. Uh, also spoke at the uh, White House FinTech Summit. Uh, another great milestone is the chamber established the D.C. Blockchain Center. Uh, so it's an entrepreneurial resource for uh, regulators, policymakers, folks on the Hill to uh, be educated and collaborate, as well as for entrepreneurs to start thinking about uh, baseline technologies in blockchain and, and how those apply to government. And uh, the Chamber also published two white papers last year, um, one uh, for smart contracts in, in conjunction with the Smart Contracts uh, Alliance and the Smart Contracts Symposium that uh, took place uh, in New York in, uh, in December. Uh, and then more recently with uh, Structured Finance Industry Group uh, in a white paper that was published uh, uh, earlier this month. And uh, looking back on it, it's just been an incredible year. Um, and, and it all uh, comes back to, to the membership. We're, this is a member-based organization. Um, and if you look at all the, the working groups that are here, uh, there's about a half a dozen working groups. Those were all originated and surfaced through the membership. Like, we should have a state working group. There's a lot of state friction when you move um, uh, Bitcoin from st uh, state to state. There is a, a global interoperability discussion. There's a global blockchain forum. So each of these, and, and over time there will be more. Some of them will phase out. And I, I think they're very uh, representative and emblematic of the growth of this industry and some of the friction points, the dialogues, and the education that, uh, that takes place. So let's get a, a sense for the room here today. Um, who in the room here is a, um, a blockchain builder? Wh who's building technology? Who's building systems, applications? Okay. And then who's a, a blockchain buyer? Who's, who's a customer? Who's a, an industry player that's, that's buying, innovating, has blockchain budget? Okay. And then uh, who's, who's in the regulatory, legal uh, community here? Okay, fabulous. So this is an amazing community. We're, we're on the front end of some uh, incredible innovation. And, and, and people always ask me like, well, what about the, the public, the private, the consortium of blockchains? And uh, there's a lot of railroads being built in this, in this ecosystem. You have the public ones like Bitcoin, Ethereum, et cetera. You have the private ones, Hyperledger, Corda, uh, et, uh, et cetera. And then you have the consortium ones like R3, B3i. And you, you cannot, imagine the amount of innovation and human capital and energy going into this space. And, and it's not necessarily you have to pick a particular railroad or, or, or a particular horse. The innovation here uh, will forge some incredible uh, outcomes. And, and it's amazing to see this, uh, uh, this curve that we're on. And, and people sometimes talk about blockchain hype. We're nowhere near any, any sort of blockchain hype. We're, we're maybe 10% of the way there because uh, much like the, what the internet did for commerce and, and content and, and communication, uh, blockchain will do for the movement of data and value uh, in unprecedented ways. Uh, and, and we're talking uh, uh, money, we're talking digital identity, land titles, et cetera. These are things of extreme consequence, and um, it's, uh, it's going to be exciting to see this play out. Um, 
Also uh, want to uh, thank the membership. Um, this, this could not happen without uh, you all. And the membership has evolved from uh, the early days of, of uh, Bitcoin blockchain whippersnapper companies to global uh, IT consultancies, to banks, to quite frankly, every industry represented um, on, our, uh, on our membership uh, base. It's pretty exciting to see. Um, I, I'd uh, now like to uh, introduce uh, uh, Marty Rogers from Accenture. Uh, Accenture is our title sponsor um, at the DC Blockchain Summit and has been uh, very gracious in doing so. He's been a thought leader in, uh, uh, in the blockchain ecosystem and I uh, want to uh, introduce Marty. Uh, so first, thank you, uh, Matthew, for having us today. Uh, good morning, everybody. Okay, folks, that was pretty lame. Um, so I don't know if you've had your coffee or what, but today is a really, really important day. I don't know if you know that today, but today is March, right? We've got a lot of excitement, a lot of energy. We've got a lot of competition, some collaboration, some coaching. We've got a lot of different uh, folks that are out here in terms of uh, big players and small players that you, as Matt just described, might, might want to put some bets on. Um, we've got some heroics that might happen, some heart palpitations that might happen, uh, some you know, uh, strategy, thrill of victory, agony of defeat. And I'm not talking about March Madness, I'm talking about this summit right here today. Um, so no, it's, it's a really uh, great honor to be here. It's great for, uh, to be the title sponsor and you know, Georgetown is a basketball school. It's very proud of its traditions here. Um, so we're, we are delighted to, to be here and to be hosted, John, by Georgetown. Uh, Georgetown has been a great partner to Accenture. It's been one of our primary recruiting schools for, for many, many years. Uh, we are a business that quite simply is about getting the best and the brightest, and Georgetown has definitely been part of that. Uh, Charles, uh, thank you for your paper. The other great thing and the reason that we recruit so many students from Georgetown is because it is a place that believes in doing well and doing good, and Charles definitely exemplifies that. And thank you, Matt, for your uh, leadership of the chamber. The uh, growth of the chamber has been amazing. Uh, we are honored to be part of it uh, and honored to be the title sponsor here today. So in terms of that, um, Accenture has made significant investments in blockchain and in a lot of the technologies that we call the new and the next. The reason for that is because it's important to uh, our clients, but, and it's important to many of the sectors, and we serve all the different sectors. Uh, it's important to all of them uh, in terms of where uh, the economy is going. But most importantly, it is about economic growth uh, and about uh, growth both in the US and globally. Um, as one of the world's leading tech strategy and consulting firms, um, we've been at the forefront of blockchain innovation and really about trying to make sure that uh, we are coming up with practical, real-world applications of it. We're helping clients in the for-profit, non-profit, and the government space uh, move from uh, education and experimentation to production and performance around blockchain. Um, we have been all about trying to be focused on the new and on the next, everything from digital to cyber to mobile to analytics, but also the next, technologies around blockchain, around artificial intelligence, machine learning, and robotics. And we're doing so to try and make sure that we help our clients um, uh, avoid uh, being disrupted and instead be disruptors. So. Today, in addition to being March Madness, uh, is important because events like today drive collaboration and engagement. It's important today because we will advance uh, our dialogue about blockchain and our understanding about blockchain. Today, we will also develop new relationships uh, within and across sectors, and that's really the power of, uh, of the chamber trying to make sure that we're bringing together folks that are large and small, consortium and government, folks from all the different sectors, as Matt mentioned, to realize the promise uh, of blockchain for our enterprises, for society, and for the economy. Uh, today, and I really want to emphasize this, is a, 
trying to get blockchain to work and work on a grand scale and to realize its promise is a team sport. Um, and so we hope, we at Accenture hope, that you will join us in making blockchain real. Thank you.